I'm not sure what's more upsetting, discovering that my pronunciation of chocobo, <clears throat> chocobo has been wrong all these years, or what Square Enix has decided to do with what could have been an incredible kart racer. Chocobo GP acts as a direct sequel to 1999's Chocobo Racing. Between then and now there was a sequel plan for the 3DS, but it fell through when quality wasn't up to standard. Stick around as we go over the gameplay, the core mechanics, what I like and don't like, as well as the visuals and performance including frame rates. So has Chocobo Racing sprinted triumphantly onto Nintendo Switch, or do we need to send this one for a walk? Oh man, I'm getting worse. Let's find out. Before we begin, you might have seen that the game comes in a couple of flavours. There's the light experience, offering the introduction to the story, as well as the ability to play online and a few playable characters, and then there's the fully priced, near premium version that includes some free currency. Without going off on a large rant about how I feel that free to play games and fully paid experiences should be kept entirely separate, unfortunately Chocobo GP does not do this in any way. In fact, to the contrary, it almost punishes its players if they choose to not spend any money. Being a huge Final Fantasy fan, the first character that I want to play as would be Cloud. Now in fairness, I could spend a good 5 or 6 hours playing through the story to earn enough of the currencies required to buy him, or I could spend real world cash and just buy him. And judging by some of the online servers, quite a few people have decided to go that route. And it's not one that I wanted to see. Chocobo features a battle pass, the purchase of which will grant you more rewards as you play through the game. The over implementation of all of these features severely hampered the authenticity of the experience offered. But we'll leave the free to play elements for your own discretion. Let's look at the gameplay and controls. Featuring a vast selection of unlockable carts, you're likely to start out your experience with Chocobo GP in the story mode. Story is delivered through voice acted cutscenes and it aims to be light hearted with a few nudge nudge wink wink moments for the adults among us. Didn't your mother ever teach you not to ask a lady such personal questions? Unfortunately though, some of the topics covered leave it in no man's land narratively speaking, with younger children likely being none the wiser but also not too entertained and if you're a fan of obvious humour you might find this okay but personally I found it quite weak. Races start out quite simple. The tracks are shorter, the pace is slower. You can optionally switch to Master Mode, which speeds everything up and essentially acts as the 150cc mode you'd find in Mario Kart. Controls are very familiar. Pressing Accelerate just at the right moment will net you a hefty boost, and through holding the bumper and drifting round the corner, the longer you can maintain it, the greater the speed increase once you release. And hopping right off the edge of a jump is going to give you a small speed boost and maybe a trick. Each of the different characters has different statistics affecting their speed, acceleration and handling, and every single character has their own special ability. On the one hand, this is a nice addition. It means that in theory, there's more reason to experiment with different characters. Unfortunately, it does make the RNG factor a little bit more tricky. In other kart races, you're aware of the abilities available. You know what could hit you at what time. But with the Chocobo ability system, it felt like more than ever, I would get squashed right on the finish line with one of so many abilities, it felt entirely out of your hands to win. Strangely, when I switched over to Master Mode, I was under the impression that the difficulty would increase greatly. But I actually found the opposite. The game's much faster, and it's quicker to get back into the action when you're hit, but the artificial intelligence of the other players on the track didn't seem to improve a great deal. It was simply like the fast forward button had been hit. There is a floatiness to the controls of all the carts, but it's likely this is simply hundreds of hours of muscle memory from another game. Carts are generally responsive and collecting the different power-ups and tactically using these when needed all feels solid enough. But then we get onto the tracks. These, in my opinion, are probably the most important aspect. They have to be challenging but fair they must be sensibly thought out, with a carefully considered limit to the amount that can be going on on screen. And that's where Chocobo GP really falls down for me. The tracks feel a mishmash of borrowed ideas. A sweeping curve might be followed by an impossible right angle turn, with three more placed back to back directly after this. While I'm clearly using the word impossible in a slightly hyperbolic way, good course design should allow the player to adapt on the fly. This isn't a Souls game, you shouldn't have to learn from trial and error, and even if there is that to some small degree, the design should facilitate for fast flowing movement.
movement, not causing the stop-start motion that you'll find online on some of these tracks. It doesn't apply to every area. Some are better than others, but there are enough of them and enough moments where it just didn't feel that enjoyable. Aside from story mode then, we have time trial. As the title suggests, you can race against the best times in the world or simply try and beat your own. The strongest mode is the online one, featuring a number of heats where you'll have to place in the top four before you can progress. They can be incredibly tense, and as you rise up through those divisions, gradually ascending to greatness, they come remarkably close to something excellent. But as the action fades and the tokens and crystals and gems roll in, to a lesser degree if you didn't buy the battle pass, you're once again reminded of the no man's land that Square Enix have placed the game in. While undoubtedly there is fun to be had here, it's hindered by poor design choices in almost every area. For me, gameplay scores 10 out of 20. Controls are fine, albeit a little floaty. They score 16 out of 20. Running on the Unreal 4 engine, I knew what to expect when it came to visuals and performance. Thankfully, they have been able to get the game running at 60 frames per second, which is quite surprising, particularly when you realise it's the same engine used for the GTA Remastered trilogy, and, well, we all know how that went. There are numerous characters and summons designed in a cutesy way with customisable carts and various different colour options once you've unlocked them. Unfortunately, there is a lot of aliasing on character models. You'll notice Jack edges around the outsides of them and the anisotropic filtering so the sharpness of the textures is very low with the level of detail draw distance you can quite clearly see the transition very close to your car where it moves from quite blurry to very blurry some of the in-game effects look quite nice while others can obscure your vision entirely this was perhaps intentional but combined with some of the track designs and the overall hectic nature of what's happening on screen it can become incredibly difficult to see what you're doing performance wise things are equally good in handheld and the smaller screen makes everything look a little more crisp audio is a massive part of any experience and cgp falls flat in this area sound effects are poor there's a general lack of ambient noise and there's a cheapness to some of the most commonly used sounds such as the screech of the tires as you drift around a corner and most of the in-game music is generally okay a little forgettable but they chose the worst menu music that I've ever heard. It's a vocal piece that I'm likely to get copyright flagged for, but it's incredibly loud, loops very frequently, and with each new menu restarts back to square one. And it's no joke to say that it became quite maddening. Visuals and performance, score 15 out of 20. The audio score is saved by the fact that Square put the effort into voice acting all of the story segments, but it still disappoints and scores 10 out of 20. And that takes us on to value. Now the RRP here is £39.99, or you can opt for the light version, which is entirely free for what's there. While the intention was probably for this to act as a hook, I'm pleased it is there so that you guys can try the game out to see if you agree with the assessments I've made. Now if you're paying full price absolutely not the irony of this drop in a week before the new mario kart tracks is not lost on me and what's here just isn't good enough and that's without even factoring in the fact that it will constantly try and sell you stuff that you don't need to buy but a young child isn't gonna get that it uses the exact same dopamine inducing tricks that you'll find in countless mobile games this aside there is a lot of content here there are lots of tracks lots of cars to unlock and a solid story mode to work your way through if you enjoy it i'd Simply say try before you buy. Value scores 12 out of 20. While I haven't particularly enjoyed my time with Chocobo GP, it does have some redeeming aspects. I'd love to see its online league system used in other games, and they tried to appeal to fans with the story. However, iffy track design, poor audio, and unusual microtransactions degrade what's here. It gets an overall switch up score of 63%. Okay, so with our reviews, you probably know I could quite easily do what some channels do and just give it one across the board. You know, I could say, oh, it has microtransactions. It's now the worst game in the world like some people do, but that is not how games work. We try and break down every single element and then be fair with it, despite personally not really enjoying it. I can see objectively 
what is here now let me know in the comments have you tried out the uh trial version maybe you absolutely loved it and don't get me wrong i had some fun playing online but all of the other shenanigans just became a bit too much for me thanks to our patrons you guys support us each and every month and to all of you who watch and leave comments nice one for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see you